was at the SDRP building, commonly referred to as the Ike, where we observed that there exist social groups segregated by race on campus. We witnessed Asian students hanging out with other Asian students, African American students hanging out with other African American students, etc. So I do think there's segregation on campus because you see all the Indian people hanging out with each other and all the Asians. The interesting thing about U of I is, yes it is kind of diverse, but at the same time you can see, you know, my freshman year I kind of saw it like my fall semester. And you can see how different um, demographics, you know, different ethnicities kind of stick amongst, them, amongst each other. Building on this observation, we conducted further research and arrived at the conclusion that the primary causes for the segregation were comfort and language barriers. Especially dealing with Asian Americans, the international students are segregated from the Asian American students, usually be due to a language barrier or a specific cultural barrier. Excuse me, my phone ran out of batteries. Can I borrow yours? <laughs> According to Pat Goldsmith, a professor at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, residential segregation reinforces, even creates segregated schools, religious organizations, recreational facilities, and workplaces. This type of residential segregation can be seen in the University of Michigan's 2009 Census Scope Act. After arriving at these conclusions, we looked further into the relationships between race and the University of Illinois and noticed interesting trends with the demographics of each dorm. I mean, FAR normally typically has like, um, you know, Asians, Asian Americans, and, you know, African Americans, and, you know, Latino, like, Latino Americans as well. It's because I live all at PAR, so I recognize uh, predominantly, you know, African American mixed mixed individuals, Hispanic individuals, and then when I go to the six pack, I recognize a lot of, you know, predominantly um, white individuals. And then for dorms, all the Jewish people go to the same dorms. All the Indians and Asians are always rooming together, so there's segregation everywhere. There's also stereotypes that come with the dorms, too. So, you know, they call FER, the FER and PER, you know, the black, the, um, the beehive, you know, because it's mainly for African Americans. and. Asians and then, you know, of course, Caucasians that stay at the, um, you know, six pack. Over in like FAR, that's more Asian. Like, I feel like there's more Asians in that section than like in the six pack. Joshua Myers, who researched how location plays a role in student preference for U of I student housing states, the relative positions of the dormitories are significant in regards to students, social doings, campus activities, and to student attitudes towards an aptness to visit each dormitory. Despite these trends, the University of Illinois tries to keep a diverse student body with segregation in public schools ending decades ago. Brown vs. Board of Education was created because black students wanted to attend white schools to ensure the same educational opportunities. It proved segregation unconstitutional. Brown vs. Board wasn't only meant to integrate elementary schools, but colleges and universities as well. This law did help with segregation, especially in schools, but unfortunately this was not always the case. This event led to future civil rights movements to success because it was the first legal act of integration. For example, the University of Illinois implemented Project 500. According to the university's archives, Project 500 was the first extensive effort by the University of Illinois to offer equal educational opportunities for all the residents of Illinois. Although this movement had many flaws, its impact is timeless because it led to cultural diversity on campus. Here on Nevada Street, you'll see many cultural centers on the Illinois campus that, that came as a result of Project 500. With these many cultural centers, students of a certain culture can connect with those with the same traditions, thus leading to comfort and confidence to attend a university with a multicultural campus. There are many cultural clubs on campus. Some of them include the Chinese Heritage Association, the Japan Air Cultural Network, and the Korean Students Association. Of course, you have um, campus dialogue, um, where it's, you know they they trying to bring you know different you know demographics together, different ethnicities and races together. Even though I'm not Chinese, I went to the Chinese dinner for their club. We want to promote sort of a social and cultural environment for Asian Americans. Specific, specifically, that's what it is through the uh, organization's title. But um, we are also here to you know promote Asian Asian American issues and 
you know, uh, provide events for people to, you know, meet one another and, you know, integrate themselves with other cultures. It's because we are Asian American, we cover all of them, um, not just, you know, Vietnamese or um, Filipinos. These clubs are significant because they allow others to learn about certain cultures. For example, any student, whether of Indian descent or not, can attend Indian Night and learn more about the culture. More familiarity of a culture leads to more comfort around people of that culture, therefore making integration more likely. Although it may oftentimes seem as if students are living in their own circles, they are all a part of the University of Illinois' massive multicultural student body. All students have available to them means to meet new kinds of people and are encouraged to do so. The university encourages integration as well as education about the many different cultures. That being said, it is the responsibility of all the students to reach out and interact with people who seem different. As long as the university continues to promote integration, segregation will become less of an issue and we can live with more unity.